you've got to know what you're worth. You've got to know how much you charge per hour. And when you bid, base it on that, taking into account the other economy around you. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds. It's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the appraiser coach, Dustin Harris. Welcome, my friends, my friends. Dustin Harris hanging out in the podcast chair and want to shout out to our great sponsors, of course, All the Mode. All the Mode is the software that you should be using. It's the one I use. You should be as well. Allamode.com, 800 Allamode, working RE magazine, providing data, information about your chosen career that you need to be aware of, especially in today's market, which we're going to be talking about today. WorkingRE.com, WorkingRE.com. All right, folks, how is your volume? How are things going out there? I have a, a wonderful opportunity to talk to appraisers across the nation on a regular basis. I really appreciate and um, look forward to those conversations, whether it be one-on-one -on -one personal coaching. I've, I've been doing a lot of that lately with individuals who've been you know, somewhat down in their volume and they're reaching out to the coach for some help on how to get their business moving again. And uh, I've seen some great success with uh, some of my clients out there. And, and thank you for those of you who have trusted me, entrusted me, as they, as they say, with uh, uh, information and uh, problems and issues and challenges and visions and goals. It is such a joy, honestly, folks, to, to be able to do that on a regular basis and to help people who are struggling, that, that need a little boost, uh, I've been doing a lot of that lately. And one of the things, of course, that I'm recognizing across the country is, as always, you know, things are market dependent. Things are different in Idaho than they are in Iowa, for example. But across the nation, I think we're obviously seeing the effects of the interest rate hike and the, well, the emotions of buyers and sellers and refinancers. There are situations, emotions, I'm going to focus on that word for a minute, emotions driving this market that are, are, are causing people to hold back. And, you know, in my recent discussion uh, with Diana Jacob, I really appreciate what she had to say uh, because she appraised in the 80s. My dad appraised in the 80s. And, and folks, there were still refinances. There were still HELOCs. There were still purchases even going on in the 80s with the interest rates uh, at, at double digits and, and sometimes high double digits. There was a period of time, folks, that interest rates were, were averaging over 20% and there was still activity going on, okay? Now, not a lot. I, I remember very well my dad struggling through that. I was a kid, I didn't know what poor was, but we were. And, and, and it can be a challenge in this industry. But Diana put it in perspective and she said, you know, 7% ain't that bad. In fact, it's, it's pretty darn good. And when you look at it that way, well, anyway, I'm, I'm speaking to the choir, right? Obviously, you you are appraisers. Um, now, you're, you're, uh, you're in that uh, home ownership side as well. Uh, but mostly, this is going to affect you, of course, on the appraisal, the career side, how you make your bread and butter. But give it some time, folks. I think things will calm down. I think uh, they are already signaling that they might see, you know, at the, uh, up into the political season, we might see a little bit of an adjustment uh, downward to those interest rates. But I think more importantly, I think consumers will just start to get used to the new normal. I really do. I think it was such a shock that things went from 2% to 7% so quickly that everybody said, whoa, 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 let's put the brakes on just a little bit and uh, be a little bit more careful about the spending that's going on there. And let's, let's be honest, folks, that's the reason for it. That's inflation is, was out of control. And that's what the feds were trying to do is to slow things down a little bit in the economy. And guess what? It worked. It always does. Now, I wanted to share with you, speaking of economies, 
a, a little bit of a launching board today for today's discussion. I think it's so important that appraisers understand what we're going to talk about today. And, and the reason I, I think it's so important is because I see this kind of comment popping up over and over and over again by appraisers, you know, counseling, if you will, coaching, giving advice to other appraisers. And, and folks, I'm, I'm just going to be bold up front and say it's just dead wrong. And it's bothersome that I see it so often. And, and frankly, it just comes from a, a place of of not knowing, not understanding. And, and I want to share and educate a little bit today about, and, and I think most of my listeners understand this already, but for, for those few that, that are easily persuaded by these kind of comments online, I, I, would, I would encourage you to listen today and I would encourage you to step back and, and understand how this stuff works. And I think you do. This is going to be more of a reminder than an educational uh, series here today, okay? All right. The gist of it, I'm, I'm just going to share with you something I read online this morning. It was in one of these appraisal uh, forums. I'm not even going to tell you where. Certainly not going to tell you uh, the, the specifics of it. And frankly, it came from a guy that I respect. Um, this is an appraiser who is pretty outspoken. Uh, I've, I've read his comments and they are, they are usually positive. They're uplifting. They are uh, helpful. Uh, this one was not. Okay, but I don't want to just throw him under the bus. I think we all say things we don't mean. Heaven forbid. I've I've got 800 plus episodes out there. I guarantee you could find some shit out there that uh, I, I wish I hadn't said in the past. Right? I'm probably going to say some things today I don't want to say. Right? It just happens. You open up your mouth, you turn on your microphone, and guess what? There it comes. So I I don't think that this individual is deserves. To be, to be ousted, I, I just think it's a perfect example of some of the comments that I see on a pretty regular basis surrounding this topic. And the, the gist of it is this. I'm not going to quote it word for word because, again, I don't want you to go out there and find it. I would just say this. There was an individual that basically said, listen, the volume in appraisals is down. And, and as a consequence, we have a tendency to lower our fees, right? Because we want more business. Sometimes that's the first thing that we go to. And by the way, I agree with this individual so far, okay? And I agree that that is not the first step that appraisers should take. You've never heard it here. You won't hear it today. In fact, I'm going to preach the exact opposite of lowering your fees today, okay? Just to state that, put it on the record out there, okay? And and his, his encouragement to other appraisers was, hey, don't lower your fees just because volume is low. And again, I agree 100%. But then he went on to say that just because demand is low, it doesn't mean that it takes less time to produce an appraisal. It still takes, let's just throw a number out. Let's say it takes five man hours from start to finish to produce a credible appraisal report. Okay, I don't know whether that number is right, wrong, or indifferent. It doesn't matter. I'm just putting it on the table. If it takes five hours to produce a credible appraisal report just because volume is low does not mean it takes less time to do the appraisal. And therefore, his encouragement was don't lower your fees because you need to be paying yourself by the hour. Okay. On the surface, I 100% agree with this individual. There are principles that are taught in his comment that I have taught and continue to teach as the appraiser coach over and over and over again. Number one, what is your value? Number two, pay yourself by the hour, not by the fee. I get so sick and tired of talking about fees online. Well, what's the fee for that? What's the, what are they paying for this? Folks, it all comes down to what you're worth per hour. But... Okay, but there is a huge gap between my agreeing with what this individual is saying and the overall principle that he's that he's trying to teach. Because frankly, folks, I'm just going to be honest here: the principle that he's teaching is is wrong. It's it's incorrect. Again, the micro principles that he taught in that principle, i.e., a exhibit a volume is low. I 100% agree. Things have slowed down, okay? He got that one right. It still takes five hours to create a, an appraisal report. 100% agree. Kudos, right? It does not matter if things are slow. It's still going to take you the same amount of time to do an appraisal report. That is 100% correct. Number three, 
What are you worth per hour? Again, if I could stand up and applaud and you could see me doing so, you would see that right now. I am absolutely cheering this individual on with those three very factual things. Unfortunately, they all fall short of the bigger principle that he's trying to teach. And basically it is that just because volume is low doesn't mean it takes you less time to produce an appraisal report. Therefore, you should not lower your fees. Again, this comes down to a basic understanding of economies. And again, it's just wrong. Years ago, folks, I read a book that I, I would not necessarily encourage you to read because it was very difficult to get through. I mean, they talk about war and peace being hard. I've never read war and peace, so I wouldn't know. I get it. War and peace is a thick book. Yeah, I get the whole principle. Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith is a big book, and it is very dry in a lot of places. That being said, I was committed. I made myself a goal. I'm going to get through the book, and I learned a great deal. And it's stuff that I I mean, we're talking 15 years after I've read the book, I still continue to utilize in my life. I learned more reading The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith than I ever did in any of my business classes in college. That is an absolute fact, including my accounting class. And I loved my accounting class, by the way. Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith taught me principles that lead and guide my appraisal business world, even today. One of those things, and, and this, this is a theme throughout the book, is the invisible hand. You've all heard of the invisible hand. I would guess most of you, raise your hand, not your invisible hand, but your real hand. If you've heard of the invisible hand but have not read Wealth of Nations, I would guess that most of you have your hands up right now. Because invisible hand is the takeaway from that book, right? How does the invisible hand of capitalism, of economies work? How does supply and demand work? These are economy 101 principles. Okay, and that's what we're talking about here, supply and demand. And I know already you're screaming and yelling at your earbuds and you're saying, Dustin, if we will just stick together, if we all agree that we are going to keep our fees high, then the banks will have no choice but to utilize us anyway and to pay our higher fees. If we will boycott or strike whatever word you want to use there, then that's what will happen. Folks, when we get back from the break, I want to share with you an analogy and I want to share with you why I believe that is not the case in this situation or in most situations. First, I want to pause and remind you that we're sponsored by Working RE Magazine. Folks, I love Working RE. I just got mine in the mail recently. I love the print version. I love it. I take it with me on my plane rides. You know, you know that little space between taking off and getting in the air and getting in the air and landing, right? That space where you can't really use your phone, you can't really do anything else. It's a great time to pick up that magazine and read through it. I love it. It's workingre.com is where you sign up. Make sure that you're getting a copy every quarter, workingre.com. We, of course, are sponsored by a great company from the very beginning of this show. Folks, I talked about 800 episodes and we've had all a mode as a as a sponsor here for that many episodes. Folks, you can go back, clear back to episode number one and you'll hear about a la mode. A la mode is something that I believe in, folks. It is a it is a software, yes. It has bugs, sure, whatever. They have a team working around the clock to make sure it is the best, most efficient, effective software for you. Check them out, go to alamode.com or 800 a mode. Welcome back, folks. We are talking about the invisible hand. We are talking about this comment made by an individual online. And by the way, it was followed up with super, uh, a super long list of, of other appraisers chiming in and saying, 100%, totally agree. Let's stick together. Folks, basically the comment is this. Don't lower your fees because your appraisals are worth no less now that volume is low than they were when volume was high. I'm going to disagree. I'm going to disagree on this end. Let me let me just give you a, a, a perfect example, folks. During the during the the 2021, let's just call it June of 2021. Okay, right in the middle, 
when things were hot and heavy and things were going strong, folks, I could easily ask for $800 on an appraisal that would normally be $600 all day long. I can't tell you how often my, my uh, clients would reach out to me. And by the way, we still kept, we still kept things pretty uh, steady, if that makes sense. What I mean by steady is, is we still kept things going pretty quickly and efficiently, even during the, the high times. When we were two to three weeks out on an appraisal, most appraisers in our, in our area were two to three months, I'm not joking, months out on appraisals. And so we would get our clients coming to us and saying, hey, hey, Dustin, um, can you do a rush for us on this? And I'm like, ooh, I don't know. What's a rush? Well, we need it in, in three weeks. And I'm thinking, okay, well, we could have done it in two weeks, but uh, yeah, let me see what I can do. Um, yeah, maybe if I move around a few things, maybe if we add $300 to that, I could probably get it into you in three weeks, right? I mean, this was happening on a regular basis. My point being this, the exact opposite of what this individual is saying. Folks, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not sorry at all. <laughs> you can criticize me in the comments. You can do whatever you want. Throw, throw the, 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 the spitballs at me. But I'm sorry, Wealth of Nations works. Principles of economy work. Supply and demand is real. And when there is a huge demand, you can ask a higher fee. When there is a lower demand, if you want to keep busy, you might have to reconsider. Folks, I am sorry, but boycotts don't typically work. Do the research. Strikes are great to wake people up but they rarely make the difference one is hoping for when you're out there with a picket sign. Again, the invisible hand works. I know that appraisers want to just stick to their guns and say, hey, I'm not gonna move my prices at all, but here's the problem, some will. It's never gonna be 100%. Now, do not misunderstand me. Do not go where I'm not going. Do not make interpretations that I'm not saying. Do not think of intent where intent is not there. I have lowered my fees slightly in the last couple of months. Yes, I said it here. But when I say slightly, I mean slightly. Where our average fee used to be about $650 in, in this Idaho area, it's now about $600. Okay, so have I lowered my fees slightly? Yes, I have. Have I dropped them down to $300? No. Do I have a moral compass? <laughs> I sure hope so, right? And please don't misunderstand that AMC, I hear this all the time, oh, AMCs are only concerned about the lowest fee. Really? If that's the kind of AMCs you're working for, folks, find other clients. Really, I'm serious. I've got a few AMCs that are concerned about fees, and all AMCs are going to be concerned about the bottom line. They're a corporation, folks, are trying to make a living just like you and I are. Okay, They're going to care about their fees, but if that's all they care about, then there is a major problem. If they are constantly choosing the appraiser that bids the lowest, that is not the company you want to work for. Let me say it again. If you are working for AMCs, that all they care about is the bottom of the barrel scrapers, those that bid the lowest, my hell, folks, find other clients. They're out there. Trust me. I consistently work for clients that give me higher fees than they could get from my competition because they know us, they trust us, and frankly, I mean, let's just be honest, speed is more important than almost anything. Quality makes a difference. We can't turn in crap reports over and over and over again and expect to continue to get work. But folks, I'm telling you, the clients that I work with are more concerned, even in the slower times, are more concerned with turn time than they are fee. And I know there's arguments to be made on that. Well, this is all you care about is, is turn times. So you just turn these things as quickly as you can. Are you, are you an appraisal mill or something? Again, folks, you can't be an appraisal mill very long and be in business very long because you get found out awful quick. Quality has to play into that. But this efficiency slash quality balance has to be in balance. But back to the comment and back to the region, reason for the podcast today. I see these comments constantly on, on the internet. Appraisers jumping out there and say, don't lower your fees. Folks, sometimes you got to lower your fees. Sorry. Again, sorry, not sorry. That's the economy. Now, let me give you a little advice. Because again, I think this, this individual that posted on the internet, the one that I've led with today, had some really good points. And one of the good points that he had was to find out what your worth is. How much are you worth per hour? 
One of the things that I do with my coaching clients, I do with my mastermind students, is we go through a process that, that we look at our finances, and this is both hard and soft costs, and we look at our lifestyle, and we look at uh, what we're used to, and then we ask ourselves, what is the absolute lowest fee? Now, stay with me. Don't turn off. Okay, there's a principle here. What is the absolute lowest fee that you could accept appraisals and still make money? Now, again, don't turn, don't turn off your podcast yet. I'm not done. That's the exercise. Never in a million years would I encourage them to actually charge that fee. In fact, we now go to the next step and I say to them, now, don't ever charge that fee. That fee is for one reason. It's the WCS. What is the WCS, Dustin? The WCS is the worst case scenario. This is the fee that you have in your head so that you can sleep better at night. When you go to bed at night and you lay your little head on that pretty little white pillow and you can't sleep because you're worried about volume, you'll be able to, instead of counting sheep, you think of that number and you say, okay, my absolute lowest number, I'm well above my lowest number. I have a long way to go before I have to start worrying. And that's it. Again, Never did you hear me today encourage you to lower your fees. I did mention that I have lowered mine slightly. Don't skip that word. But in the end, and this is so important, you've got to know what you're worth. You've got to know how much you charge per hour. And when you bid, base it on that, taking into account the other economy around you, and that is supply and demand. The number of appraisers, the number of the volume. There's a way, by the way, with my coaching students, we found out how to figure out actual volume in our area. I share it with them. I'm not going to share it with you here today, but there is a way to figure that out. And I'm telling you folks, it's not that hard to figure out where you need to be because you know the number of appraisers in your area and you know the volume and you can make those calculations. Again, Hats off to the individual for taking the time to post on the internet. But hopefully we encourage ourselves to, to become a little bit more educated about how economies work. And supply and demand, I'm sorry, it's a real thing. It truly is. I told you I was going to give you an analogy. I'll give that to you as we, as we leave today. I want you to imagine your CPA. Okay, And let's say that you go to your CPA for your taxes every year. And let's say that she charges $500. Okay. And, and that's a pretty consistent thing for your corporate business taxes, okay? Now, let's say that you also do go to her to, uh, to do your personal taxes. And let's say that that costs you $350, okay? So your total bill is $850, all right? You with me? Let's say that next year that Congress passes a law and it's signed uh, into law by the president that there's not going to be a flat tax for personal, for individuals, individuals and marrieds. Okay, so no longer do you need to do your personal taxes. It's, that's gone away. It's a flat tax. You pay, you know, you, what, is, what is your income and you pay 12%, whatever it is. Okay, again, this is a hypothetical world. I'm not reporting on actual nudes. This is all fake news. This is just, this is just an analogy. Okay, so all of a sudden your tax bill goes from $850 to $500 because notice I said the personal tax return went to a flat tax, not the corporate. You still have to do your corporate tax return. You still have to go through the process and it's still, let's be honest, well above your head, okay? Now, let's shift for just a second and let's put you on the other side of the table. You're the CPA. You're doing all kinds of personal taxes, but your bread and butter is corporate taxes. That's what you do. And so you are making all this money on, on two things, right? On private, personal taxes, and on corporate business taxes. All of a sudden, your income stream for personal taxes is now overnight gone because Congress, again, passed a law that flat tax would be the, the new norm and nobody really needs the CPA to do flat tax. It's a very simple calculation uh, in your head or on a calculator. It's on a postcard. That's it. Here's your check. I made X amount and, uh, and, and I, pay, I made 100000 last year and I owe you $12,000 in taxes. That's it. You no longer need that CPA. 
but you still need it for the corporate side. Let me ask you a question, and then this is dead serious. If you're the CPA, do you lower your price of $500 for corporate just because there's less demand? And folks, I'm sorry, and for those of you who say, hell no, I want you to take into account the number of CPAs has not decreased, just the volume has. Is it possible that you might need to lower your fees just a little bit to compete? I would say it's not just possible, it's an absolute assurity. How do you take this analogy and apply it to our situation? Again, do not misunderstand. I am not in any way encouraging you to lower your fees to the lowest common denominator. I am saying this, that to set back and say that supply and demand have nothing at all to do with the prices we set for our appraisal fees is just wrong, folks. It's, it's misinformation and it's going to cause you to make mistakes. You need to understand how the market works, how economies work, how supply and demand works. Would love to help you with that. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier that we, uh, we go through this exercise in my coaching program, uh, specifically in the Mastermind program. We have open seats across the country, folks, um, and we would love to have you be in those seats in a city near you. Check us out by going to theappraisercoach.com slash memberships. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. I've got a long way to go before I have to start work, stop work. Sorry, editor.